So as we start this whole story of uh, how we got to where we are today, where we come from, all those kind of things, we have to look at the prehistory of us. We have to look at the history of us. We start with written kind of things. Where is the prehistory of us? And so today's little short uh, lecture here is going to focus on the Paleolithic and the Neolithic, kind of the ideas of the prehistory of us. And so the big question is, what do we know? You know, we know that the Homo sapiens sapiens were people. They were us. Uh, we might call them cavemen or Cro-Magnon, any of those kind of terms for them. But what we know as us, according to the theories, at least according to the theories of other different scientists and anthropologists, those kind of things that are out there, is that we appear, <clears throat> we appear about 100,000 years ago, give or take, during the time of the Paleolithic. Now, we think of this, uh, you know, stereotypic caveman kind of thing. You think of, you know, of uh, wearing furs and carrying a spear or a bow, those kind of things. You may think of a Geico commercial where it says, so easy a caveman can do. What's kind of funny is that that usually insinuates that cavemen weren't that bright. Well, you know, we're going to see that during this uh, couple days here, if they were that bright, they weren't that bright. Um, so what is the idea of Paleolithic we're talking about? And literally, Paleolithic means old, that's paleo, and lithic, which means stone. And so, uh, put them together, we have the old stone age, essentially a time when stone tools were used. Um, it's it's uh, this time period basically goes from 2.5 million years ago to about 10,000 years ago, uh, give or take. Uh, essentially, it's about 99% of all human prehistory, according to the calendars, those kind of things we have, um, fits into you know, this idea of Paleolithic, where we personally fit in about 100,000 to 10,000 BCE, uh, where we can't fit into the Paleolithic time period. After 10,000 BCE, we kind of moved to the Neolithic, which we'll talk about at the very end of this. Now, I think about Paleolithic life. We had to break down the Paleolithic life to two ideas. First would be nomadic. Nomadic meaning that you move around. So we think that a lot of these uh, uh, Paleolithic people were involved in hunting and gathering. They followed their food. They follow the animals, follow those kind of things. So they would follow animal herds to get their food. Uh, there's a lot of talking about the Paleolithic diet, or the Paleo diet. Uh, people go on basically eating meat, eating it raw, those kind of things to get more uh, protein, more nutrients. Because some people say that the Paleolithic time is when we may have actually been our healthiest, believe it or not. Um, so there was a climate and time period in this time. Okay, uh, we're in a, an era called the Pleistocene era. Um, and it's a time of repeated glaciation over top of the world. So glaciers repeatedly covered big chunks of the world, including right where we are right here. There's during this time period at least two, three, four glaciers covered where we are right now. Even stuff like uh, the Baraboo Bluffs were created by uh, the gla these glacial periods we have. And during this time of, gla of glaciation, one, there's not there's less land space in the world. So that's a big part of why uh, people are moving around. And two, it kind of changes, you know, just how everyone is, where everyone is, and as these animals move around. Uh, think of the movie Ice Age, if you've seen it. Uh, you know, they kind of addressed here a little bit in terms of that. So what kind of things are living in this time? What kind of things were these Paleolithic people possibly hunting? And we call them megafauna. Megafauna pretty much means big animal. Mega being big, fauna being, you know, animal. And what kind of animals are we talking about here? Awesome animals like mammoths and uh, woolly rhinos, giant bears, um, some call it cave bear they found, uh, giant sloths, giant horses that are, you know, six, seven, you know, ten feet tall we're talking. Um, American lions lived here in America, those kind of things. Here's an example, here we get saber-toothed tiger, or saber-toothed cat, I should say. This is uh, a mastodon, it's actually a Boaz mastodon. Um, these animals existed right where we live today. Uh, they found this mastodon down by... Uh, over in, uh, it's here in Wisconsin, actually. Uh, now it's uh, found in the uh, historical, uh, the uh, geology museum at UW. Uh, but, you know, these animals lived around here. Uh, they didn't have uh, animals like uh, two-ton elk. Elk that weigh two-ton. Now imagine if you get one of these things, you can feed a lot of people for a long time. And that's what we kind of think about, you know, as people are hunting these things, that you have a great big group of people. Why well, I think they worked as a group of people is that you had to have a big group of people to hunt these animals, and then these animals animals would feed a big group of people. And so a few things to me about the Paleolithic way of life. We're going to talk a lot more about this in class, um, possibly before your notes are due uh, on Friday. But uh, we know that tools were used here, okay? A lot of stone tools. Uh, maybe some tools made, tools made of bone as well. Uh, wooden tools, leather, fiber tools, like, you know, using animal fiber, maybe they were used, maybe they weren't, we don't really know, because they haven't lasted as long. They've all decayed away. The only tools we still have left are the stone tools. We'll see some examples in class. We also have the idea of the use of fire. We actually have found ancient fire pits. Um, 
you know, caves where different skeletons are, those kind of things that show that fire was actually used. And so it's kind of cool to see the whole idea of, you know, fire being used this time, probably from lightning, you know, and controlling it that way, or even from being able to, to use flint and start a, a fire. Um, people think that at this time rafts were used. Uh, there's ideas of uh, Homo erectus, um, that one uh, type of, of hominid getting to the Philippines from China by way of a raft. And so we think rafts may have been used to help transport stuff on people on water. Uh, domesticated dogs, we found dog skeletons near people. And I think that, you know, around, you know, at the very end of the, of, of the Paleolithic era, um, dogs were domesticated. One of the first domesticated animals, and they used them to help hunt. Like you would hunt, you know, with ducks and geese with a dog. Same kind of thing we're talking here, where dogs would help hunt. Uh, by the end of this time period, we have much more advanced weapons. We have a spear thrower, uh, which is, uh, it was called an addle addle, is what it was called. And you have it's a device that can chuck a spear faster and, uh, you know, bury it deeper into a big animal. Around 35,000 years ago, you have the bow and arrow that's invented. Uh, the bolus, which was uh, two, um, like, big pieces of stone that were rounded uh, with a piece of uh, rope or leather or string between them that you could uh, tangle the animal with. Even found some pottery, those kind of things. Uh, you know, pottery to contain, hold things and hold uh, gathering, gathered goods, those, that kind of stuff. The thing we're not really sure about is the social organization. That is how... Uh, the people you know, organized themselves socially. You know, was there a certain gender in charge or a certain class in charge? And that's because we weren't there, and a lot of the things that they may have used to show that, you know, were weren't really available. And what we have to do that to look at that is just the artifacts, and we have to try and make a guess about what that kind of stuff looked like. Now, eventually, we have a revolution. Okay, uh, and they call it the Neolithic Revolution, going from the Paleolithic to the Neolithic. It's called revolution. Revolution just means it's a fundamental change. So at one point around, you know, 10,000 years ago, give or take, we had this big fundamental change in human history. The ideas of what we're doing shifted. Um, and so our whole lives basically shifted, and we changed the organizational structures of our group, how we found food, how we lived, all those kind of things. We call it the Neolithic or New Stone Revolution. Still using stone tools, but our whole lifestyle changes, okay? Uh, and essentially we go from... Uh, from hunting and gathering our food to the idea of systematic agriculture and animal domestication. Essentially, we go from hunting and gathering to becoming farmers. And that's a big change uh, that we have happened in this Neolithic revolution. So let's tell this real quick, okay? Um, farming starts over a period of 4,000 years. People think. People think farming starts over a 4,000 year period where maybe people started gathering seeds as part of their gathering to eat, and maybe they, you know, dropped some. They came back the next year as they were, no, as they were trapped following the animal herds of, well, hey, these crops grew here. Let's throw some back, so throw some seed back on here again. And hey, we got back and there's food here for us again. And over time, the idea of you start building seed bins and you start, um, you know, come back to those same crops all the time. So maybe you start planting fields of crops so that when you come back through there the next year, you know there's going to be food there. And we see different foods develop in different parts of the world. In the Middle East and Europe and even India, you see Wheat and barley would be a big thing. So, like, well, you know, what we make in the flour to make bread. Uh, in Asia, the big grain was rice, rice patties. Um, in Africa, it was yams, which is kind of like a sweet potato almost, and bananas. Uh, maize, what we here call corn, was a big good in South America and Mexico and Central America, those kind of places. Um, and so all these different kind of crops we start, you know, putting together. Over time, you start picking out the best seeds, and you start manipulating the genetics of the of the crops. You start saying, okay, which seeds are the best, which seeds are the strongest, I'm going to keep those and plant those the next year, and I'm going to get better, stronger crops. And that is when we get the idea of systematic air culture, the idea of farming. Uh, modern seed science today is all about genetics and those kind of things, and we'll talk about it in class a little bit when we discuss our notes. And this stuff starts, you know, with the very beginning of farming. Uh, now, some of the agriculture today was called slash and burning up these huge, big forests covering most of, you know, Europe and most of the world. You got to get rid of them, Okay. Um, and so you have to cut, the easiest way to get rid of this stuff is by fire. You, they would use power stone axes, cut these forests down, and then burn what was there. And not only does that clear the land off, but it puts more nitrogen into the soil and helps things uh, grow better. And so slash and burn became a big way to clear the land. In terms of animals, eventually you start taming certain animals. Maybe you start keeping them by you, um, and over time you start kind of taming the animals, uh, and you can you know, put them in fences or put them in areas and keep them. Not only are you able to get near the animals so you can you know, get them, eat them easier, 
You get, you get other stuff from them too then. You get milk. Think like sheep and goats and cows. Milk from them. You can get clothing from their hides. And then, of course, the meat. Now, of course, you can still hunt. You know what I mean? You can still hunt and get extra food. But a lot of people call, you know, it's a, lot, a lot of scientists and historians and, and anthropologists, they call farming the greatest development since fire. The biggest thing since fire that changed the way we live. Um, a few of the new tools and adventures we get. Our tools start, start shifting a little bit too. Uh, instead of needing tools, you know, we're going to need all kinds of new tools for this new lifestyle. We see less tools for hunting and more tools for farming. Before this, most of your tools were designed to go kill things and then process that killed thing. Now we start getting farming tools. So we get size, like uh, this thing is an animal shoulder blade here with teeth on it that can cut down grain. We have digging tools like these. They're digging sticks. We've been kind of your shovel or your hoe. Uh, we start seeing pottery. You use clay pots to keep your grain because that way little animals, little rodents can't get to it. We have new clothing like cotton we can grow, uh, linen we can grow, wool we can get from sheep and other animals. And we can start making new cloth instead of just leather hides. All this stuff starts changing how we live. We also have, uh, we also change how we live too. We go from having, you know, we have to move around and follow animals to start developing villages. One of the first villages is a place called Jericho in the Middle East. And we have images here of it. Here's a archaeological site and here's a artist rendition of it. And so you have these big surpluses, and now we can start talking about having people live in a city and people specialize in certain jobs. Because not every single person has to hunt. Some people can farm, some people can make tools, some people can weave cloth, and we start seeing people specialize in certain jobs and then you start trading with each other. And so we start seeing the villages develop, people are storing food there, there's enough food for everybody, that not everybody has to be 100% involved making food, we start doing other stuff. We start learning how to do other jobs and trade to get those things that we need. We even have evidence of religion. We start seeing statues created of, uh, of uh, animals and female forms. Let them, it's a mother goddess idea, how people think about. We find murals like this of animals and those kind of things and people and geometric shapes. We also have burial. We see that bodies are buried in certain positions with all different kinds of things on them as a possible evidence that religion might come up. We'll talk about this in class too a little bit. Guys, I know to do Friday in here. Uh, I'll give you two days in class. Some big questions we're going to talk about between now and uh, next week are going to be, first off, w when was life better? Was life better in the Paleolithic or the Neolithic? What did our Paleolithic and Neolithic life really look like? And when did civilization actually start? Please make sure you guys do your notes. Please make sure you do your summaries. I'll see you guys in class. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.